There was an excited silence in the magic forest. All the animals, trees and flowers seemed to hold their breath. If anyone dared say something, he whispered it quietly. When will it happen? The mouse squeaked, shyer than before. The old tree said in a domineering way. Should I have a look? Asked the squirrel. Don't do that, Fushle, the tortoise remarked. You will rustle the leaves too loud. We must be patient. But to remain patient was difficult for the animals. Restlessly, the squirrel hopped around. If you believe I'm too loud, perhaps the bird may have a look. He's very quiet, he begged. Although the old tree would, of course, never have admitted how curious he was, he had had this idea before. You young people are not able to wait, he mumbled. Well, let the bird have a look. The bird was happy to be able to do something and flew away. The animals were left behind, became more and more nervous. The air was full of suspense. Hurrah! could suddenly be heard in the forest. Hurrah! It's there! It's there! The bird was fluttering over the animals excitedly. The silence of the forest was over. Everyone was chattering. What does it look like? Has it already got a name? May we visit it? Just go, just go, said the old tree. Send it my regards and tell it that I am waiting for its visit. Full of impatience, the animals ran and jumped away. Mother was watching.
watching her baby. The father was looking at the kid with benevolence too. Suddenly his ears rose. I think there are visitors. He said, oh, how pretty, how lovely. The animals were whispering to each other. This is the prettiest little kid that was ever born in the magic forest. It's really golden, the squirrel said full of enthusiasm. What's its name, said Mumel the hare. We don't know yet, said the father. We haven't had any time to think about its name, but Wushel has found it just now, said Mother Dear. Wushel was surprised. I have given it a name, he asked, full of amazement. Yes, Mother Dear laughed. Haven't you said that the kid is golden? Goldie is the right name for my little daughter. Goldie's a nice name. Wushel was so happy. He had found a name for a dear kid. This is a commitment. Wushel swore to take care of Goldie everywhere and never leave her alone. Soon Goldie learned to jump and run. Wushel became her best friend. He played and rollicked with Goldie all day long. He showed her all the forest. He proudly introduced her to the other animals. They were happy about the visit of the two friends and liked Goldie more and more because she was always friendly and cheerful. When the friends had rollicked about enough, they went to the old trees. They lay down under the branches and listened to the old stories. The trees had been living in the forest for a long time, even longer than the old tortoise. Therefore, they could talk about times when the wild bears and buffaloes were still alive and when only a few people came into this part of the forest. Today, the trees told Goldie the human beings could be dangerous. On Sunday afternoons, they invaded the forest in big groups and could disturb the silence of the animals. And sometimes, the tree said, hunters came into the forest and would kill the animals with their guns, yes. As Goldie had never seen a man before, she could not quite believe the stories told by the trees. But even without men, the forest could become dangerous. Goldie had to learn this quickly. Every day, Goldie and Bushel played in the meadow. It was nearly summer and everywhere it was blooming in the most beautiful colors. Goldie was watching the bees busily collecting the pollen. One of the bees she found particularly pretty and tried to nudge her with her nose again and again. The bee enjoyed this very much and played tag with Goldie. Take care, Bushel shouted. But it was already too late. Goldie had fallen into the pond. She was rowing her legs <laughs> heftily. The water's not too deep, Wushel shouted. You can stand there. And indeed, when Goldie stopped kicking around, she noticed that her legs were on solid ground. She quickly jumped out of the pond. Wushel laughed his head off. And the bee was giggling. Stop laughing, you two. That could have happened to you just as well. But not to me, the bee said cheerfully. And I always take care where I run along, Bushel said, full of self-confidence. Goldie was sulking. But not for long. The day was much too pretty to feel offended. Goldie and Bushel ran home tiredly. Goldie's mother usually waited at the edge of the protected plantation area for the two friends. But today nobody was to be seen. Full of unrest, both of them were looking around. Very strange, Goldie said. Where could she be now? Goldie and Bushel searched again and again until it became dark. They asked all the animals whether they had seen Goldie's mother, but nobody knew anything. Tired and sad, Goldie and Wuschel lay down to sleep. 
The next morning they started the search again. After many hours of unsuccessful searching, they sat down in a meadow and were utterly depressed. What's the matter with you? They suddenly heard a voice. Can I help you with anything? It was Mummel, who had seen the two when he was looking for food. Oh, Mummel, Goldie said. My mother's disappeared and nobody has seen her. We already asked all the animals in the forest. Oh, dear, Mummel was terrified. That sounds bad. I've thought something like that before. Do you know anything? Have you seen anything? Well, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm afraid I'm right, Mummel said. Yesterday about lunchtime, I was lolloping along with my children in the meadow over there. Then I came quite near to your protected forest area. Suddenly it became dark, but it was not the sun that went down, but big shadows were falling on the grass. Mummel became very quiet. They were men. Men? Goldie shouted, horrified. Did they have guns? Did they kill my mother? I don't know. As soon as we noticed the men, we ran off quickly. But I haven't heard any shots. Carry on. What happened then? I don't know, Mummel said sadly. Mummel would have liked to comfort Goldie, but he didn't know how to do it. So he lolloped away slowly. Let's go to the trees. They've seen so much. Perhaps they know what may have happened. Bushlu suggested. They ran to the trees quickly and told them what they had heard from Mummel. Oh dear, said the trees, that is bad. No one who has had anything to do with human beings has come back into our forest. From now on, nobody could hear Goldie laughing in the magic forest anymore. With sad eyes, she sat in the meadow without saying a word. The other animals missed her laughing and rollicking, and after a while, they also became more and more sad became quiet in the magic forest. Even the birds twitted only little messages to one another. It was almost have believed that even the sun did not shine so brightly anymore, for it had become darker and darker in the forest. One day, an old wandering bear came into the magic forest. He looked around in amazement. Was this really the forest that he had known as a young bear? At that time it had been quiet, bright here, and everyone certainly had been happy. He took a rest near the old trees. Hi, old tree, he said. What has happened here? Why do you all keep your heads down? Shh, shh, the tree said, because the bear had spoken very loud, and nobody had done that in the magic forest in a long time. The bear looked amazed. If you're not allowed to speak loudly anymore, you're in a bad situation. Now tell me immediately, there is always some way to help. Not in this case, said the tree. Listen, some months ago we were all very glad and happy. Then something terrible happened after that. And the old tree told the bear the story of Goldie and the disappearance of her mother. The bear listened full of interest. Is there anything by which you can recognize Goldie's mother, he asked. Yes, Goldie's mother had a white spot on her right front leg. That is something very special. Then I've seen Goldie's mother, said the bear. You've seen her? Is she alive? The tree called. She's alive! The bird sitting on the branches of the old tree shouted. He had heard everything and rose in the air and shouted, She lives, she lives! The animals looked up in horror. Have you heard the bird said she lives? They whispered because they did not dare talk too loudly yet. But as there were so many whispering, the whispering became louder and louder, and then there was a rustling through the magic forest. She lives! Goldie's mother lives! Goldie, who was sitting in the meadow, sadly heard this as well. She lives! She could hardly believe it. The bear seen your mother. She lives! The bird shouted excitedly. Goldie jumped up. Where's the bear? Near the old trees, the bird shouted. Now at last, after a long time, Goldie ran away with long jumps. Stop! Not so quickly, Vushal shouted and was hopping behind her.
Where, where have you seen my mother? She called as she arrived by the old trees. That is a sad and long story, the bear said. Meanwhile, all the other animals had come together around the trees. <laughs> Listen, said the bear. You will know that many thousands of animals are killed by the people. They all shouted in horror, but not always. Sometimes we're just caught and locked up by the human beings. Why does that happen? Mum asked. I don't know exactly, the bear said. Whatever the reason may be, they give us just a little piece of earth. They make a high fence with points around us so that it becomes impossible to jump across it. That is called an enclosure by the human beings. And then what will happen to the animals that are locked up, the mouse squeaked. Something strange will happen. Every day many people turn up and look through the fence. We are never unwatched. There's absolutely no place we can go and hide ourselves from the looks of man. That's absolutely horrible, said the shy hedgehog. But that's not everything, the bear said. Often the people bring along drinks and food, and then they throw the empty tins and bottles behind the fence. <gasps> Where the animals are? Fushel asked. Exactly there, the bear said. And often the animals injure themselves on pieces of glass or tins. And Goldie's mother? I've seen Goldie's mother in exactly such an enclosure. Is she injured? Goldie asked in horror. I don't think so, but she's ill. Ill? The old tree moaned. Is it bad? Yes. Unfortunately, the men do not come to the fence on foot, but they come in big cars. And these cars make a horrible noise and pollute the air. And the animals must breathe this polluted air all day long. And that's why Goldie's mother coughs all the time and has become ill. She can't get away from that? Fushel asked. The bear shook his head. Goldie's tears were running over her cheeks and even the trees started crying. Oh dear, that's impossible, Momo said full of energy. There must be a way to free the animals. It has never been tried until now. But haven't you heard what the bear said? The fence is much too high to jump over it. That's true, it is too high. But how do you know that that's the only way over the fence? Perhaps there may be a way under the fence. Under the fence? The animal shouted, that's the idea. Then off we go, the bear said. The animal started to move. It was a tiring way and it lasted for many, many hours. At last they saw the fence. Goldie wanted to run. Stop, ordered the bear. We've got to wait until it is dark and the people have gone home. Or do you want to be caught yourself? The animals hid behind a high hedge. At last it became quiet. The last car took off. Let's go, the bear whispered. Cautiously they all moved to the enclosure. It was a sad sight they saw. The tired animals stood on little pieces of earth and they all looked very ill. Mom, Goldie shouted quietly, but when Mom did not react, she shouted a bit louder, Mom! Very slowly, Mother Deer turned around her head. Goldie? She whispered very weakly. All were quiet because of their emotion. Mummel was the first to start talking. I'm as glad as you are, he said, breathing deeply. But we must start working now. We want to free all of you, Wushel said proudly. And we also know how to do it. Let's start. All of a sudden, the animals had disappeared. Where have they all gone? Goldie's mother asked. Don't you hear anything? Goldie asked. Mother Deer raised her ears so she could hear it herself. There was a nibbling and a scratching. The hare, the squirrel, 
the mice and the rest of the animals were nibbling busily at the fence with their sharp teeth, whereas the moles dug deep holes underneath the fence. Without a break, they worked hour by hour. That should be enough now, Mumu said at last. If you can make yourselves very small, you can slip through the fence. Full of doubt, the locked animals came nearer. Carry on. Who will be first, the bear asked. I'm sure it will work. Goldie's mother made herself as small as she could, and she was at last able to slip through the fence. The animals cheered. Shh, shh, Mumu said. We can celebrate this later, but first of all, the others have to get out of there. While Goldie and her mother were cuddling to one another, the other animals slipped through the fence. And I'll away from here as quickly as possible. It's already getting bright, and soon the first people will turn up here, the bear warned. It was a strange procession which at dawn moved towards the magic forest. Often they had to take a rest, because some of the animals were injured and very weak. But they managed to do it. They're coming, the bird shouted. Under the old trees, they came together for a great festival. And at last, after many weeks and months, everybody was happy and cheerful in the magic forest again. And also the sunbeams were dancing, full of joy on the leaves of the bushes and the trees. Mm -hmm.